So welcome friends to another episode of Building Blocks. Today I am fortunate to have with me Vishal Kapoor ji from National Bank. So Vishal ji has been a very good support to a lot of our clients to get them a smooth mortgage and he is very pleasing personality to work with and it's always a pleasure sir and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you Mudit ji for having me. It's always a pleasure to be with you. So thank you. No pleasure. So sir I have some questions for you. So the first one is a very basic one. So if you could explain to our people that what is a mortgage approval process. So when a file goes to the bank what generally bank sees before approving a mortgage. Sure. So initially when we may meet the clients uh-huh. we collect the documentation and then there are various factors that generally lenders look at. Mm-hmm. First is the income what type of income the person has what does the person do for a living whether he is salaried whether he is self employed whether he is self employed with an incorporated business and uh, the depth uh, since how long this person has been working uh, if he has been in the industry for 5 6 years or 5 6 months and uh, if he is uh, incorporated then they may look at the financials uh the financial health of the company is the income that is being drawn by the client okay. is sustainable in the long run so uh the income part is very important mm-hmm. and besides the income they also look at uh applicants down payment part okay so down payment uh, whether it has been accumulated over a period of time with gradual savings mm-hmm. or if it has been through a gift mm-hmm. uh, and then so that is another thing that they look at and uh, the other important thing is when somebody is seeking credit is the credit worthiness of the client okay so for credit worthiness they are looking at the credit score in addition to the credit score they are also looking at the traits that the person has uh how many trades that that this person has uh one or two credit card versus like maybe multiple trade lines with either like $500 limit or $15000 limit okay so a person may have a high score mm-hmm. but maybe the credit depth is not in there so they when they are assessing the application they are looking at all these factors as to how many trade lines they have what type of debt they have so income down payment and credit these are the main things which lender is looking at while assessing a credit application for mortgage purposes excellent so uh, so you call it as trades so basically it's credit cards or loans or line of credits so those are called trades yeah trades like uh, like the credit card is a revolving facility mm-hmm. where you take the money and then you return your debt and then there could be an installment loans like sometime people take auto loan mm-hmm. or they could have a lease um, so those are installments and then um, unsecured line of credit so these are different trades so th- so it makes a difference as to what kind of trade the person has been using okay. whether it's only one credit card with 500 limit or multiple trade lines uh, with the number of years behind it where the client has been demonstrating that he has been paying well mm-hmm. so those things give comfort to the bank when they are lending in the money so not necessarily if, if they have multiple trades it doesn't mean a bad thing as long as they are yeah, paying yeah, it yeah. regularly as long as somebody doesn't give the impression that they are a credit seeker okay that they are going everywhere and just applying for credit mm-hmm. uh as long as they are not doing it but multiple facility like uh, it could be as low as two trade lines and with good limits mm-hmm. um uh, it, it it should just give the impression that there is a balance in terms of uh the utilization he has done and then uh, and it's not like uh, so many inquiries mm-hmm. uh with the multiple agencies showing that the client may have a, a difficult time and then he's just continuing to apply for credit and then also they look at uh the credit utilization let's say the limit is 10000 mm-hmm. and the person has used 9999 dollars 
or sometimes they may have gone over the limit. Yeah. So that will impact their score. So the score will be impacted. It will bring it lower versus somebody has a limit of 10,000 and maybe they use two, 3,000 or even like five, 6,000 and then they pay it off. So, so all these things play a role in determining, you know, the credit score and the impression that it creates in front of the underwriter at the bank. Great. Thanks, sir. And um, this reminds me that when someone is seeking to apply for a mortgage, is there a minimum threshold for credit score or there is no threshold as such? So ideally, like uh, A-lenders are seeking approximately 680 Beacon Plus. Okay. So, um, but at the same time, if for any reason the score is lower or uh, has been impacted because of one reason or the other, then we try to ask the client as to what happened okay. and then present that justification or explanation to the underwriter. Got you. And if it's an isolated incident happened once in a long history, right. then the person assessing the application on the other side uh, does understand it. But if it is a behavior thing that you know happens every year, every month, then obviously the, that gives a different impression. Okay, great. And when uh, the next one, what I have on my list is that if a person is applying for a mortgage and, you know, they get mortgage, they are trying to review the application with their banker. So what are the things, finer things which they should look before signing on the dotted line for a mortgage? Yes, sir. So when uh, a customer goes to a bank and then they are looking for things as to what are important, hmm. um, I think... I will uh, go a step ahead. Actually, the advisor should be the one asking more questions to the client and get an understanding of the client and understand what are their requirement, okay. uh, what is their risk tolerance, what are their objectives. And based on client's requirement, mm -hmm. the advisor, uh, I would say, should be the one basically customizing the mortgage for the uh, client. And then obviously the uh, things that to uh, consider is like uh, the terms and condition, mm -hmm. whether it is 30 year amortization, whether it is 25 year amortization, whether it's a five year product, two year product, whether it's a variable rate product and uh, what kind of prepayment privileges are there, uh, whether the mortgage is portable or not uh, because it could be possible that after some time, the client may decide to sell this property, move on to the new one. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that this client would want this mortgage to be ported to the new property. So all these things uh, should be at the back okay. of uh, our client's mind and the advisor's mind. Right. So in National Bank, what is the portability is allowed? Yes, sir. The... Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So our mortgages are portable. Yeah. So that way, like if he sells this property and he buys another one, our mortgage we can port from property A to property B, sir. Okay. okay. And how does my employment history impact my mortgage qualification? So I just wanted to know, like suppose someone comes from uh, back home mm -hmm. and they are here for say six months. They are in a full-time employment. Yes, sir. Both husband and a wife. And they are here for six months. So it's their employment history as far as Canada is concerned is only six months. Right. But they are in good uh, full-time employment. Yes. Sir. So can those kind of profile get mortgage? For sure. For sure. So now the good thing that has happened is back home also now we have credit agencies. Mm -hmm. We do have credit scores uh, back home as well. Okay. So I've had clients where I uh, get their Indian credit report. Mm -hmm. And many times if they are moving from US, then it's pretty much the same. So the point is we have to demonstrate the credit worthiness of the client. So if the period that they have been in the country is less, then we request them to obtain the bureau from their back home. Got so that will suffice. And then sometimes um, uh, like applicant may have their lease that where they are living, we try to demonstrate alternative sources of credit 
so that they have been paying their rent on time mm -hmm. they have they have the cell phones utilities bill that they have been paying those things on time mm -hmm. so along with their bureau from back home uh, with the alternative sources of credit we demonstrate uh, the credit worthiness of the client and those applications are definitely considered sir i see and sir another uh, s scenario where if someone is in employment for two and a half years mm -hmm. and then they change their employment so suppose someone was in it yes sir. and they move to say for example trucking right. after two and a half years yes they are earning in that new profession so how does that impact their mortgage yes sir mm -hmm. so if somebody switches their employer and they are in the same line of business mm -hmm. then obviously uh, you no know issues. no issues because they have the history yeah. uh, in the same industry so if they change the industry and the um, uh, if it is a salaried position sometimes people may uh, get some education and you know they have had they have had a work experience in industry a but they were studying and you know getting a degree for industry b mm -hmm. and now they are at a salaried position in industry b mm -hmm. we can always explain like now they have acquired the qualification and hence now they have joined this new industry so uh, that education or the skill that they have acquired definitely helps uh, um, in demonstrating why now they have a different line of work if somebody goes to open up their uh, self employment then generally uh, banks are looking for a two year history uh, as a self employed okay so for approving or for employment verification and stuff so you need two years of tax uh, employment like two years of tax documentation or how does that work yeah so if we have a two year uh, tax documentation it obviously helps but if somebody has been in the country for one year only mm -hmm. uh one and a half year only so they are going to have the notice of assessment or okay. tax return for only one year and yeah. that is okay too okay so we take that and submit the application accordingly obviously it is understandable that they have not been in the country for two years hence they don't have the two year tax return but uh, they are salaried employee they have the down payment they have all the other things so they they definitely have a good prospect in getting their application approved with one year for sure and so is there any other programs national bank has which you want to uh, say or something for new buyers or investors something special which national bank yeah has? sure so uh, we are a scheduled a bank okay uh, we have lots of product uh, for newcomers also mm -hmm. for um, uh, self employed also uh we have uh, like uh, with minimum down payment through cmhc programs also and uh, we have good refinancing options also so if anybody uh, is looking for a mortgage they can definitely contact us okay. and we'll make sure they get good terms and conditions and uh, their objectives are fulfilled with us okay great and so this is a very uh, important one and all the time i hear this what is the benchmark to select between a fixed interest rate and variable interest rate so how do you tackle that yes sir i <laughs> i i have little bit idea but i want to hear yes. from horses now yeah yeah so that's a very good question uh, fixed versus uh, variable, variable rate mortgage uh, it depends on the individual okay. uh, their own risk tolerance uh, whether the client is comfortable with the fluctuation mm -hmm. and they can sleep at night with the different rate mm -hmm. um if they are comfortable with that so that they can consider for a variable rate mortgage but uh, obviously if they don't want anything to move nowhere mm -hmm. then uh, fix could be the option and if they are in the middle then there is a beautiful product we have it's called a multi tier mortgage acha so we can make uh, two portions one portion for variable rate mortgage one portion for fixed so they wow. get best of the both and uh, they can diversify their risk and uh, uh, that could be the other option if somebody uh, thinks that they want to take best of both the sides so we can offer that as well yeah that's wonderful and so they can drive the percentage of the or the ratio of 
for sure. part and variable for part sure. or national yes. bank will? No, 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 they can, they can. They can. So okay. let's say they have a $800,000 mortgage, mm -hmm. they can have 400 in variable, 400 in fix, or let's say they just want 200 in variable, 600 in fix, whatever portion they feel yeah. comfortable, uh, that can be done, no problem. Okay, awesome. That's a good one. And how does this appraisal process works in mortgage? Because I believe that's a very important part. Every bank would want to ensure that the purchaser who is coming to them for the mortgage, they have not overpaid for a property. So sure. there is an appraisal which is involved. Yes. So sir. how does that work? Whether it's always physical appraisal or it's a system-based valuation modeling? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So Mudiji, there are three types generally uh, of appraisals. Okay. One is called the desktop appraisal. So the property value assessment is done on the desktop itself. Okay. Uh, you just enter the collateral details, age of the property, square footage, address, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then it will spit out the value like you are good to go. So that is the desktop appraisal. And then the second one is the drive-by appraisal, as the name suggests. So somebody may just drive down the street and, uh, you know, take the photos from front okay. of the house and then they assess the value of the house. Mm -hmm. So that's the drive-by. And then the third is the full-fledged appraiser where somebody takes the appointment and then goes in the property. They take photos inside, you know, all of the houses, uh, outside the houses, street view, back view, bedrooms, washroom, basement, electrical panel, everything. And then they come the to their value. office, look at the comps, and then they assess the value. So, so these are primarily the three ways the lenders uh, decide that the collateral that they are lending on mm -hmm. uh, is is a good one. So that's how they assess. Sir. So for a property which comes to for a, a approval mm -hmm. for the bank, how do they decide that this property automated valuation, we are okay with desktop appraisal, as you said, and this one would have a physical in-person appraisal? Yeah. Is there a criteria or it's all random? It, it is. It is built into the system the system will tell us which, which one, one it's one looking for. Okay. So sometimes in the same neighborhood, you know, if the property appears, the value appears to be reasonable, then may, it may just say, okay, you know, like desktop is good enough. Okay. Or uh, depending on, you know, the value, the timing, uh, it assesses and then whatever it tells us, we take it from there. Okay. Perfect. And... Uh, is there a, some quick calculation or something to determine that if I am having a fixed mortgage as a consumer with the bank yes, to break the mortgage if I am deciding to sell the property or there could be situations, whether it's a quick calculation that how much would be the penalty for a fixed versus variable or, or thumb rule which we yeah. have? So generally the lenders will have a calculator on their website where people can go and, you know, find out the penalty. Okay. So that could be one option. The other option is to call the lender directly. So then there is no surprise. You call the lender, ask them that this is when they want to, you know, pay it off, how much will be the penalty. So that will eliminate all the confusion. And then uh, generally, otherwise, like uh, for variable, it could be three months interest. Okay. But like I said, like either the website, or best thing would be call to them. just call them and you know eliminate all the errors Surprises. and then get get the right figures. Oh, no, that's fair. And what is the minimum down payment on which a person can get qualified themselves for a mortgage? Yes, sir. So minimum down payment uh, uh, is five percent up to five hundred k. So anytime somebody is putting less than twenty percent, it has to be. Uh, insured mortgage, default insured. So up to 500K is 5% up to first 500K. Okay. So, and then the difference is 10% uh, up to a million dollar. Okay. So let's say somebody buys a property for 600K and then 5% for the first 500 and then for the remaining 100K, they have to put 10%. Okay. And then if the property is over a million dollar, mm -hmm. then minimum down payment is 20%. Okay. And then like uh, if the value is like 
substantially increment then they also sometimes look at the postal code and then they look at the lending values but to answer your question minimum would be 5% depending on the you know purchase price and their income level this is all obviously subject to qualification provided they have their income to qualify this is the bare minimum one requires right and uh, so this last one is easy one <laughs> so what inspired you sir to become a mortgage broker i know you have been in the business for almost 20 years now yes sir yes sir but like how you started and what inspired you and then what you like most about your, your yeah. job well uh what i lo- lo- love most about my job is the uh, aspect where you know we put in our bit of contribution uh, for people to get the home ownership so as an immigrant myself to this country uh, it was very vital for me uh, to get a home for my me and my family right. so whenever we are able to uh, put our bit of contribution uh, when the client gets the keys on the day of closing that gives me immense joy and uh, i get to meet uh, new people like yourself <laughs> and uh, many other good people uh, every day uh, so that uh keeps me going so i love that part of my job that's good i truly appreciate your time vishal ji and thank, thank you, you so much for coming here. thank you for having me sir yeah. thank, thank you thank you thanks everyone uh, for your time today and uh, i will see you in our next session stay positive and stay motivated take care bye bye